SCP-6140, The True Empire. The Davite Empire, as we know it, is one defined generally by violence. They were a nation of cannibals and conquerors, using blood magic and thaumaturgic rituals to sow chaos and carnage. All of this information is contained in SCP-140, a book that not only describes the history of the Davite Empire, but also continues to expand upon it if provided any liquid suitable for writing, rewriting reality to suit this history. One of the big threats the Foundation worries about is if someone were to get a hold of a copy of this book and let it write enough history for the Davites to bring them smack dab into the modern day. SCP-6140 concerns exactly this scenario, although perhaps not with the results you or the Foundation might expect. SCP-6140 is the Davite Empire, as described in SCP-140, which is expected to no longer be a historical concept, but rather an active entity, when it materializes on March 20th, 2022. This is due to SCP-140 breaching containment, and the O5 Council has preemptively declared the materialization event to be a broken masquerade scenario. A group consisting of both the Department of Analytics and the Department of Applied Force produced a report outlining the primary dangers that could be associated with a modern-day Davite Empire, based on information from SCP-140, archaeological findings, study of Davic inscriptions and documents, and various data models. Their ground forces will be a high threat, with an estimated 2.4 million active personnel, all with full access to modern equipment via purchases from foreign suppliers, since, of course, someone will sell guns to the Davites. Their Air Force won't be quite as much of a threat, due to a smaller size, but they could find ways of anomalously modifying some aircrafts. Their Navy won't be a threat nearly at all, since the area they are expected to manifest in, largely the modern-day Middle East and Russia, is mostly landlocked. They will likely have plenty of outside alliances though, since their history in the area will be extensive. The Foundation is already working on preserving the present geopolitical structure to avoid an immediate cascade into a dominance shift scenario, in which the Davites manifest already in control of the planet. They are a militaristic empire by nature, so their infrastructure will have no problems handling even a multi-front war, and they will likely have an espionage program, with spies embedded all over the place. Then comes their actual anomalous threat as the Davites were well known for their thaumaturgical capabilities. They will be able to cause significant changes to individuals to suit specific purposes, and more dangerously, they will have high levels of destructive abilities due to their packs with an apex-tier pluripotent entity, the Scarlet King. The Davites were also highly capable anomalous botanists, having created all manner of dangerous plant-based and biological weapons. It'd likely be trivial for them to concoct some sort of deadly plant or fungus-based contagion. Then, of course, there's the age-old threat, nuclear weaponry, which the Davites are certainly going to have available to them. Moving on to what incited all of this, the containment breach of SCP-140 was due to the Foundation never being in control of all of the known copies of the book. One of them was in the personal collection of Richard Bruce, the 11th Earl of Elgin, and a known Marshall Carter and Dark associate. Although he was aware of its anomalous nature and observed the proper protocols to handle it, such as never allowing any liquids nearby, his property itself wasn't highly secure. A group of lightly armed anomalous individuals managed to break into his estate and steal the book. Afterwards, Bruce immediately contacted MC and D to report the incident, and since they knew the danger involved here, they immediately contacted the Foundation in turn, telling them that they could keep it if they recovered it. An MTF was sent to retrieve it, quickly learning that it had been stolen by a sect of the Children of the Scarlet King, the same group responsible for SCP-231, 
the seven girls of which six gave birth to increasingly disastrous events, and the seventh is currently contained thanks to the Montauk procedure. The children of the Scarlet King planned on using the book to resurrect the Davite Empire into the modern day, since they worshipped the Scarlet King prominently. The MTF tracked the cult to a house in Scotland, but arrived too late, finding that the ritual had already been completed. Surveillance footage of SCP-140 in Foundation containment shows it spontaneously combusting around the same time. As best as the Foundation can figure, the ritual involved igniting the book in order to bring forth the one true empire from this hoary and tired parchment. Since all of the books were connected thaumaturgically, this resulted in all of their simultaneous destruction. Additionally, after the ritual, all known Davite artifacts began emitting a unique kind of Hume radiation, meaning that they were anomalously interacting with our reality. The ritual was performed on the winter solstice, due to it being the symbolical equivalent of midnight, but it's not expected to take full effect until the vernal equinox, the symbol of dawn, when the Davites will manifest into consensus reality. 051 sent out a briefing to all Foundation personnel to explain the impending situation. It reads, To all members of the Foundation, In three months' time there will be a CK-class scenario of unprecedented magnitude. On March 20th, 2022, the Davite Empire will manifest in present consensus reality. Current estimates suggest that its territorial extent will stretch from central Siberia and replace most of modern Kazakhstan. For the benefit of personnel unfamiliar with the Davite Empire or SCP-140, a brief summary follows. The Davite Empire would be one of the most hostile and anomalous nations to have ever existed. Several novel thaumaturgic practices were developed in this area, including hemomancy, herbomancy, and necromancy. The state religion enforces worship of the Scarlet King, a violent, divine figure. An extant version of this group, known as the Children of the Scarlet King, has attempted to cause world-ending events on several occasions by summoning their deity. Their anomalous warfare capabilities will have been greatly enhanced through access to modern technology and weaponry. The danger or nature of such enhancements are unknown, but are believed to be extensive. All existing exploratory research projects are suspended. All non-essential containment work is suspended. Sites have been assigned specific tasks to protect as much of humanity as is possible. Expect a bulletin detailing your new priorities. On March 19th, all essential personnel will be moved to reality-anchored sites to provide immunity to the CK-class scenario. Class A or designated personnel will be relocated to extra-dimensional sites. We're currently working on installing additional Zank and Astasco's constant temporal sinks to resist retroactive disruption to the Foundation's existence. We will survive the reappearance of the Davite Empire. Regardless of what happens on March 20th, normalcy will be protected. The consensus will be maintained. From the desk of 051, secure, contain, protect. With that said, let's fast forward to March 20th. The second part of the document stands in sharp contrast to the first part, going from Keter class to neutralized, with an unrestricted clearance level. We're told that SCP-6140 was a CK class scenario which resulted in the re-manifestation of SCP-6140-A a UN-recognized state officially known as the Republic of Davistan. Predecessors to the Republic include the Davite Empire, various tribal groups, and its membership within the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. All of these groups had been forcibly suppressed from consensus reality 
until the restructuring event occurred on March 20th. In other words, what the Foundation thought was going to happen was the Davite Empire as described in SCP-140 was going to suddenly appear, but instead what appeared was a completely different nation, with the Empire having crumbled at some point in the past. The restructuring event occurred due to the books being destroyed, but what they learned after the fact was that the books were actually highly inaccurate. Not only that, the Foundation, and clearly the Children of the Scarlet King as well, were incorrect about how the books worked and what they were doing. The original theory was that the books were restoring an empire that had been completely wiped from existence by slowly adding history that expanded their existence closer to the modern day. But this was only partially correct. The truth was that the books were also the things responsible for destroying the Davite Empire in the first place, and thus the book's destruction undid this effect, bringing back the original history. The Republic of Davistan, as it exists now, is the true Davite Empire, evolved and reformed. We're given a short list of some of the key differences between the Davite Empire described in SCP-140 and the new history learned from Davistan. The Davite Empire was depicted as remarkably consistent throughout its entire history in SCP-140, changing very little, while the actual Davite culture transformed significantly as technology and social conditions changed. The Davite Empire was also depicted as containing an imperial cult devoted to the Scarlet King, and a focus on violent masculinity, which survived into the modern day as the children of the Scarlet King. In actuality, the Scarlet King never existed, and was concocted by the creator of SCP-140 to subvert the matriarchal rule of the Davites in favor of a patriarchy. As a side note, the leaders of the Davite Empire were known as the Eptim Ansor, which translates to Seven Mothers, or less accurately, the Seven Brides. It was written that the Davite Empire had one of the largest slave populations of any civilization in history, with 75% of their total population consisting of slaves. This was true, but not for long as a slave revolution quickly brought down the empire, and all of the successor states have abolished slavery in all forms, considering themselves as heirs of this revolution. It was also written that the Davites were led by an anomalous subspecies of humans known as the Deva, who practiced extensive cannibalism. In reality, the Deva were just normal humans who pretended that they were divine but they did practice cannibalism. The Deva were all wiped out during the slave revolution, although later Davite nations would continue to use the title of Deva for various leadership positions, dropping the whole divinity thing. SCP-140 mentions two brothers, Cain and Ablashal, believed to be SCP-073 and SCP-076, Cain and Abel, but in reality, Ablashal and Cain were Davite cultural heroes that led the slave rebellion, and neither were anomalous. Finally, the book goes into detail describing the Davite's botanical capabilities, anomalously altering plant matter into various weapons and phenomena. The truth is that Davite horticulture, while highly advanced, is not anomalous, and their techniques have formed the basis for general horticulture around the world. So, why all of the inaccuracies? Well that brings us to SCP-140-A, the creator of the book. The Foundation investigated and eventually deduced that the creator was a man named Thomas Bruce, 6th Earl of Elgin and ancestor of Richard Bruce. It was originally believed that Thomas had sponsored another man named Ablashal Curix to publish a work which described the Davite Empire but thanks to records present within Davistan, they later learned that Ablashal Curix was just Thomas's pen name. 
In 1786, he visited the Grand Khanate of the Deva, during a time when the country was significantly less powerful than its prior heights. Thomas was fascinated by the past of the country rather than its present, and so he wrote the Chronicles of the Devas. The book ignored most of the country's history, instead blending in much of its popular mythology. He then made contact with an unknown occultist for the printing of the books, who performed an extensive ritual on June 20th, 1788, the summer solstice. The ritual took effect on September 22nd, 1788, the autumnal equinox, resulting in the Davite history being completely changed to suit Thomas's writings, wiping out the later nations that followed the empire. A single copy of the book was preserved in the Davite National Library, allowing it to survive both this event as well as the second ritual that brought the nations back. To summarize then, Thomas Bruce essentially wrote a fanfic version of the Davite Empire, and then utilized an occult ritual to make it become the actual history of the Empire. This version, consisting of bloodthirsty conquerors and cannibals, wouldn't result in the continued evolution of the Empire, so the later nations were erased from this reality. The anomalous nature of the books allowed this alternate version of the Empire to continue to expand through history towards modern day, and it's this version that we and all of the Foundation are familiar with. When the Children of the Scarlet King performed their ritual again, the original ritual was broken, wiping out the alternate Empire and snapping back the original into modern day. The people of the Republic of Davistan are none the wiser, and neither are most of humanity, since reality was rewritten to make it as if the Republic had always been there. The only ones that are surprised by this development are the ones in the Foundation that are capable of observing reality changes, which generally includes the O5 Council. They learned that they actually had two Foundation facilities in the Republic staffed by Davistani members that were fully loyal to the Foundation. They decided to bring in one of them to give a briefing on the nation's history, which I'll read for you now. Hello everyone. Hope you are well. I recognize some of you, but the feeling is not mutual. You've asked me to give a briefing on my home country, which none of you knew existed. To make it worse, you are more familiar with a wildly inaccurate 18th century English Orientalist scandalous and highly embellished depiction of our country, which was in fact anomalous and removed our country from existence entirely. This version of our country, if it had ever existed, would have been the bloodiest and most anomalous civilization in the world. You called me here to describe what my Davistan is. I'm not going to do that. You can find out what we're like later. No, today I'm going to argue that we deserve to live. Because that's the real reason you called me here. To decide what to do in the wake of this CK class scenario. I don't even know where to begin with that. I think I'll start with myself, why I'm here. In the timeline and world I remember, we were not expecting anything to happen on the equinox. As such, we had reduced security in the temporal exclusion and reality anchoring sites, and more personnel allowed outside them, all at normal levels of course. I happened to be outside a site at the time, traveling between one. Then 6140 hit, and now we don't agree about anything. So you have that as a problem. We clearly have more consensus reality on our side. It's everybody else in the world who isn't a skipper than you do. So, so we're here to stay, I think. You have to let us stay. It's your, our whole ethos. 
and that means I need to give you a crash course into our history. My people, my nation, we're not anomalous. If the briefing you gave me is true, and I really have no idea, because it was incredibly brief, then we have been on the wrong side of the joke for something along the line of 200 years. We're the victims here, and I'm worried that your knee-jerk reaction will be to play the joke again, because that's what you do. I've dealt with all of you before, in my reality, the one I remember. I guess those versions of you are lost, but let's be honest, you haven't changed. None of you have changed in the entire time you've been alive. That's centuries for some of you, right? We're a peaceful country. If it wasn't for the actions of a single Orientalist in his book, a book I read as an academic curiosity, we wouldn't be sitting here today. You wouldn't know the difference between us and anywhere else in the world. Yes, we had a bloody past, but not without consequence. Yes, the Davite Empire had one of the highest rates of slavery in the world, of any country ever. Perhaps it was only higher in Sparta, but the Helots. But you know what happened next? We ripped the Devas apart and burned their palaces to the ground. A single prince decided to eat an enslaved child when there were more slaves than free men. So his estate rose up and hanged him. And then, because there were more slaves than Devas, that initial rebellion spread outward and toppled the entire empire. The true history of our nation is not one of eternal slavery, no. We were the first nation in the world to outlaw the practice, and we never let it return. But a single man saw that past, that single moment in which a prince ate a child, and he stretched it into eternity. He made it the past of the country that slavery was the backbone of our entire past, and the present. The revolution wasn't salacious enough for him, so he took the moment in time that was, and he made it the only image of the country, the only one that could exist, but without the release of revolution. Depravity, but without consequence. And it spirals from there, becoming worse and worse, because we had no voice, nothing to say, stop, it wasn't like that. It was nothing but tragedy what he did. So I come before you today, and I have to beg you, do not repeat what he did. Do not do the same things. Do not force us back into the dark. Please. As far as the Foundation can see, the sudden introduction of the Davite Empire is abnormal, and they tend to contain the abnormal. On the other hand, most of humanity is perfectly fine with the Republic of Davistan, and there isn't much worry about them compared to any other nation. As it stands then, the Foundation will likely let things remain as they are, a peaceful end to the Davite Empire. As usual, canon is what you decide is canon, so if you prefer the idea of the Davite Empire dripping in blood and fire, as Thomas Bruce did, feel free to continue to think that way. If, however, you prefer the idea that a nation can change and become better, this is a welcome entry. <laughs>